Hey, I'm back with another quarantine video, trying to keep people entertained, give you guys something to watch. I know there's a ton of other stuff, but hopefully you want to watch this a little as well. It's also a topic I've wanted to tackle for a while, but honestly, I was a little bit too lazy. Oh, for those of you who keep objecting to my sound, I do have a new microphone on the way, so bear with me for maybe another a video or two, and then hopefully my new microphone will be here, and hopefully that'll make the audio a lot better. Anyway, the topic today, and you're looking at a really cool figure that's going to be released next month from Artisan Guild, which I'm working on the pre-supported version, but the topic that I wanted to tackle was Prusa Auto Supports. It's funny because at being someone, I guess, who's considered a support expert, it's funny how often I see people say, why would you bother with a pre-supported tier? You can just hit Prusa Auto Supports. I do it all the time. It prints great. It prints perfect. Um, and, and I had tried Prusa Auto before and I thought it was pretty bad, actually, but I didn't get around to making a video on it. Now that I'm quarantined, stuck at home, I have some extra time. I was looking for video topics. I thought now would be a good time to tackle um, Prusa Auto Supports. And I'm not trying to knock Prusa or any of the other companies to buy any of the products I use. The, the, the programs just aren't there yet. They just can't do what you can do placing by hand. So I figured what would be a fair test is I'm gonna support this figure by every, every support placed by hand like I always do. And then I figured what I would do is I would auto support it uh, in the Prusa slicer, like people say they do, because it you know, takes a minute and they're done, uh, and then print it and compare them. But I have to be honest, after doing the Prusa auto supports and then inspecting it, there were so many unsupported islands, I'm not gonna print that version be, to compare because I'm gonna have to clean my FEP afterwards because just, you'll see, I have a video where I show you exactly what I do. So what you're gonna see in the video is I drop into Prusa slicer, I use their audio auto orient feature, and I'll go into why I don't even think that was good. Uh, then I uh, supported it, and then I exported the STL because I wanted to inspect it uh, in, in Chew Box before I just printed it just to make sure, because it looked to me a few things. It looked to me, and you'll see in the video, that one or two of the supports it auto placed were gonna bond to the model, which that's anathema to me, that's terrible. Um, it can happen. It happens to me by mistake sometimes too, but on an auto support program, it shouldn't be happening or if the program is good. And number two, I just thought just looking at it in their slicer, there looked to be a bunch of islands I thought weren't supported. And on top of that, there are times when I support a model, not where there's an island, but where I feel it needs extra support or something that I feel might stick to the FEP, even though it's not an island, it might be such a thin little minute part printing at once that without a support, it might just stick to the FEP and just pull off the model. So I think that's the part the programs can't handle yet. So anyway, I don't want to waste too much time blabbing, right? Let's look at it in, uh, let's watch me drop it into the Prusa slicer, auto orient, auto support, then we'll go into Chidu box and start to look at what's wrong. In fact, I didn't even go through the whole model to find everything wrong because as you'll see in the video, I found so many things wrong pretty quickly. I didn't want to sit there for a half hour, 40 minutes going through the model layer by layer and showing you all the mistakes that the, the Prusa Auto Slicer was making. So if you can bear with me, I think it's only about a total of 10 minutes. You can really get a feel for the difference between hand place supports and, uh, you know, this Prusa Auto Slicer everyone says, you know, is the greatest thing. It's not terrible. It's just, you, I mean, the problem is I can't even start from there and then add supports because you'll see for it's, their supports are such a cluster, cluster bleep that I wouldn't even want to start with it. And plus, I think the auto orientation is terrible. So I don't know what to say. I Basically, I would never use it. I, I understand some people have a low tolerance for how their models look. If they have pot marks on them and maybe a, you know, a support bonded to it, that doesn't bother them that much. To me, it drives me crazy. That's why I do what I do. So anyway, and then I'll have some close-up high-res photos of the one I did do. No comparison pick, because like I said, I don't feel like cleaning my vat. Uh, after using the Prusa Auto Supports, which is what I would have to do. And honestly, I don't want to go clean my vac for a partially failed print. You know, even I think the model would print, by the way, the way the Prusa Auto Supports were on there. I think it would print. It wouldn't look as good as mine, but it would print. But then you'd need to go clean your FEP afterwards, so I'm sure people don't even do, and then they probably get failures or punctured FEP or something afterwards. So I just, this is why I think Auto Supports, from everyone right now, Auto Supports suck. Don't use them. I really don't think it's a smart thing. Anyway, all right, thanks for sticking with me. Again, this is not a I'm great, they suck. It's just 
it's more of a, I don't think you should use it because I don't think it does efficiently what it's really supposed to do. And the important thing is you don't want uh, resin stuck to your FEP after you print, right? So that, that's the point of this video. So anyway, stay tuned. Let's look at that Prusa slicer. Then let's look at the model in Cheetahbox. And then we'll see some pics up close to this guy, which is this guy's just an awesome model coming next month from Arson Guild, just by the way. I mean, it's incredible. Anyway, thanks everyone. So here we are in Prusa Slicer. You can see there's a fantastic sculpt um, by Artisan Guild. This is a uh, uh, the leader of a orc and ogre clan that is becoming demonized, and he is, I guess, halfway on his way to being a demon, and it's very uh, Asian-themed, and has some really cool uh, armor detail, like demon face on the knees, pads, and shoulder pad and stuff. So uh, let's see what, what Prusa Slicer does with this. I would orient it like this and then tilt it back five degrees. Uh, let's auto orient it and see what it does. And it shouldn't take too long, just a few seconds. I'm, I'm actually interested in the, in the auto orientation because orientation is a, is a big thing for me. You know, you guys know I like to uh, have my, if there's any damage from supports, there's always a little damage. You want to hide it as best you can. I always feel like underneath the model is obviously the best place. So we'll see what happens when the uh, Prusa Slicer gets a hold of it and decides how to orient this, which should be any second now, hopefully. Whoa. Okay, I would, oh, I would absolutely never, ever choose this orientation. I hope none of you would. This is, without seeing supports on it, going to necessitate some supports right to the face, right where you're going to be able to see them. Uh, also, to that shoulder. You know, th this orientation to me is just terrible. It's, it's, going to ex it's going to put support damage where you can see it for sure. The other thing is, just looking at this, it really increased the cross-section. The largest cross-section on this model is going to be way bigger now when it's oriented like this, which means more peel force. So I'm not, I'm not thrilled with this auto orientation feature, especially on this model at least, because I think this orientation is pretty stupid actually. So anyway, let's, let's get some, you know, maybe I'm wrong though. So, you know, I'm definitely not perfect. I'm human. So let's see if the computer is maybe smarter, knows something I don't know. Maybe, maybe it calculated the way to put the least supports on and this was it. So let's see. Oh, that, that looks like a mess. Oh my God. Um, okay, so let's let's go in and look a little bit. Uh, I do. Okay, at least it, well, it keeps the the back clean, which I don't know if that's anyone's. I mean, my goal is to keep the back clean also, but I want to keep the front clean. Uh, this has most of the supports right in the front, and it looks like there's one sticking into his eye, like someone's trying to poke his eye out, which I don't think is really good. Let's get a little closer. Yeah. Oh my God, it's the eyelid, the eyebrow, and the eyeball all being poked. And then you got a, another one up on his eyebrow, I mean, on his ear, where you'll see it, right on his lip. I, I mean, this, th th this wouldn't even be called rookie mistake for me. But anyway, let, let's keep looking. Now, there's a mess of supports in there and cross structures. I Just eyeballing it, it looks like it's missed some spots because I know on those ropes, because I had done mine already before I did this Prusa version, you know, I had so many supports on the ropes themselves. This looks like it has supports in some unnecessary places, but, you know, we'll see. Um, now, I've dropped it into Chitu Box so I can get a better look at it. I did see that one support um, in the midsection is, is touching the model. It's going to bond to the model, which is terrible. Now, here I'm looking at that cross section. The way it tilted it, it's creating a huge print surface area uh, by angling it like this, which... I mean, I guess with all these supports, maybe that peel force won't matter. But if you had other models on there with it, maybe it would. So hopefully this wouldn't leave a line. Uh, but let's get in closer. Yeah, those supports to the face really bothering me. Um, but okay, let, let me move on from that. I want to harp on that too much. You see cheek, uh, eyelid, and eyeball itself. Oh, my God. Uh, and just looking down, I think, wait, did he miss one on the hair right here already? Hold on, let me... Let me layer down on this because I'm pretty sure that looks like an island to me. And yeah, that needs a support right there. Absolutely. Okay, that's one miss just like right off the cuff without really even looking hard. Now let me look at the arm and the rope over here because I know this rope needs, you know, this area should be supported really well and it doesn't look like it. Oh, there's an island right there. It missed. Let's zoom in over here. 
Yep, that island, definitely. Uh, let's deconstruct this a little more. Oh, did that miss the island? Hold on, let's zoom in. Yeah, that, that one right there, that support's supposed to hit that island and missed it somehow. Okay. So that's a, that's a mess. That's stuck to your, that's two things, three things stuck to your FEP instead of your print. Now, this thin little part coming out, technically, this is not an island, but I would absolutely have a, a, a very thin light support going to that just to make sure it, it doesn't stick to the FEP. It's because it's so thin and light, it might just stick to the FEP rather than to the model. Wait, did I just see another part of the rope? Hold on. I, there's so many supports in the way. Let me deconstruct it again. Let's go back up. Yep. Another island. So you got another. So in this little area, we've already got four parts. We're going to have small particles stuck to your FEP, which means, and you might not even notice it. It'll print out maybe fine because that, that area might be a little flatter, but you might not notice because it's so small. But then you have these little bits stuck to your FEP, which are probably so small you wouldn't notice that either, even if you like ran your finger through with a glove, which sometimes I do. But that means your next print, it might get pressed into your FEP and, and, and puncture it. So this Prusa auto support, people are doing Prusa auto supports and just going. I think you're making a horrible mistake. Just, I'm just looking at this, and there's all kinds of places where you're going to have resin stuck, you know, stuck to the FEP when you're done. Like, this needs a support right here. You know, you see that? That island? That needs a support. That's, you know, you might say it's only 10 pixels. That's 10 pixels stuck to your FEP right there. Um, let's keep going. You know, because there's a lot of little fiddly bits here. You know, uh, it looks like it got that area, which is good. Okay, oh. Wait a second, what did I just see there? That, that, that needs, that support's not touching that area properly. See, if I was hand placing, I might just put a support there and then angle it so that support angled up a little more and touched that piece at the same time. Now we one support would hit two spots. Uh, so that needs, wait, there's something else right there already? Yep, another island, yeah. So this, you can see, this auto support function, I mean, I'm only looking at, one calf and one forearm and we found now like seven or eight spots already that needed supports that didn't have them it's like seven or eight spots you'd already have material stuck to your fep when you're done this this is actually dangerous for your machine i mean unless you clean your vat after every single print that's another spot that needs uh, support right there i mean i could probably find more but this this mess of crappy supports is in my way it's making it hard to see let me keep going uh I'm, I'm sure I can just keep finding spot after spot. Now, now here's an example where the machine, I think, fails just in, in analyzing like a human. So here, it is supporting the lowest part of this, like, semicircle that's going to print up here, it looks like. But what I would definitely do, once I've supported the base of this, like right here, it, it does a good job here. But as this curves around, that's all unsupported. I would actually put a light at each part of that semicircle at the edges to make sure it prints out all right. You know, it's not an island, but I think you should support it. Up here looks like a miss already. I didn't even really, wasn't looking for that, but I just popped out at me. Yep, that's another island. Another, so another bit of uh, resin stuck to your FEP right there. I'm sure if I just keep going through this model, even with all the support in the way, I'm just going to find spot after spot. I think I just, wait, did I just see another one? I mean, like I said, my vision is being blocked by most of this stuff, and I can still find a ton of spots that are being missed. Uh, that one's actually, you yeah, know, that actually needs a support right there. Okay. Oh, I just see some pot corner of my eye. There you go. That's pretty decent size one right there. And that's, again, that whole bit of rope right there is pretty big. Stuck to your FEP, right? So people tell me they do Prusa support, set it and forget it, man. Forget that. That I don't believe. I mean, you do that, you're taking the risk with your machine. Now, if you do that and you say, well, you're going to go back in and add supports, try and add supports into this structure. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like fun at all. I mean, this, this structure is a Now, look at this big, thick one hitting the rope and that, you know, ball thing on his body. That's a terrible placement, you know, of a support because it's going to do damage when it comes off. You know, there's, there's, there's no way around that. Uh, I would use a tiny, tiny, thin support in there because it's not really supporting a lot of material. So I'd get away with one of my ultra lights in there and do no damage. I, I just think, you know, the program obviously can't do that. And... Like I said, I'm not trying to knock the program so much as explain. Like, this program is not a substitute for, for hand placing. Uh, especially, it's one thing if you say you have tolerance, you don't mind if your models don't look as good. But nobody nobody wants material stuck to their FEP afterwards that could damage their machine. That's what I don't want you people to have. You know, at least if this supported everything 
and just came out crappier, I'd say fine, it, it, you know, it's passable. But when it's going to leave, and I just saw another island there when I did that, if it's going to leave you know, resin, here's another spot. If it's going to leave resin just stuck to your FEP when it's done, especially resin bits so small that you don't notice them really, that's really a danger to your machine. That's a danger to your FEP. And that FEP gets punctured, you know what happens. You've got resin leaking throughout your whole machine, uh, you know, which is a problem. And you might say, hey, I've used, you know, Prusa auto supports like this, you know, 20 times and nothing's happened. But maybe it's the 21st time when when this this resin sucked your FUP does damage I don't know I'm just saying it you just need to understand that if you use Prusa auto supports and just print you I believe you're taking a substantial risk you know just looking at this example for sure uh let me drop in mine just so we can compare you know what I did to what you know Prusa did let me move this out of the way let me bring in my version of the model and you can see I have a lot of supports on mine as well. Uh, and that is because you'll see a lot of really thin supports. And that's because those areas of the rope and those areas in the arm and the armor and all that stuff that I just showed you the Prusa supports missed. Well, I got all those. So I had to use a ton of very light supports to get in there. But you see the face? The way I orient it, the face is pristine. Not, not, nothing's on his face. Nothing's on his eyes. Nothing's on his cheek. Um, and the way I orient it, I think the rope actually needs less support as well. Um, some areas of the you know ropes underneath need a lot of support, but I was able to angle it so some of them really didn't need that much. So, and the back of mine you can see is pretty clean, like the back of of the one that the Prusa supports did. But again, the face on mine is also clean, and any damage to mine, as you can see, is going to be directly, basically underneath the model. So you'll even though because I vary the thickness on my supports, the very little damage was done anyway. But the point is, it's all hidden under the model. So just looking at the difference between mine and, and the Prusa, to me, it, it's really no comparison. Anyway, let's look at the print that picks so you can see how clean uh, my version came out. So you can see his face came out perfect. Uh, everything you can see in terms of uh, his shoulders, his chest, that whole, you know, all those areas you can really going to be visible on the model, you can see are just ultra clean. Let's look at it uh, from the back. And from the back, you'll see, even though I had more supports in the back than the Prusa version, because the way it oriented, the back on mine's very clean. Oh, <sighs> something I shouldn't even be noticing probably. That gourd hanging down from the front, it looks like he has a some kind of testi testicular, testicular disease. So I, actually, let's not talk about that. Let's move on and look at him again from the front. Again, let's look at the face. You'll see how, how the way I oriented, the way I support his face came out just absolutely flawless, which... I believe is what we're all, you know, we would all hope to get. And you can see what an amazing model this is, by the way. This is so cool. Look how nice uh, the, the armor printed out with the demon face on stuff. Really, really cool model. Anyway, that's it. Ho hope you uh, got some insight here. Please like, please subscribe, please check out my other videos. And uh, happy quarantining. Stay safe.